Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out. And in the video today, actually something a little bit different, as you might have guessed from this format that we tend to do when we're doing something a little bit different. This video is related to one we did a few weeks ago. It's with, uh, it's basically my interview with Bob Kirstein, who we talked about his purchase of Bob.com and other premium level domains in the in the 1990s and kind of what happened to all of those. For that video, I interviewed Bob. In that video, we promised that we would release the full interview. It's about 20 minutes long. This is it. I'm just gonna roll into the interview. Obviously, this is a little bit different. We'll have our normal video coming as well today. This is just for people who want a little bit more depth. So here you go. Let's dive into it and I really hope you enjoy it. Okay, so Bob, you got into buying domains really early on, right? We're talking, you know, not early 2000s in that dot-com time, but well before then, right? When did, when did it already kick off for you? Um, well, I started a little bit in 95 because I was working for the Vancouver Canucks and the Vancouver Grizzlies, so I helped them get their domain names. But I started buying them personally in 1996 when it opened up to the public. Yeah. So before 1995, it was only companies or governments or who could who could buy things uh, before the public? Telephone companies and things like that. But you had to be an insider, one of these companies that, that had direct links to get them. But in 1995, they opened it up where you could buy whatever names that were still available for $100 a name. It was $100 for two years right so i mean and all those private companies that had early access they didn't snap them all up because it seems to uh, you know anyone watching this today must be like wait they didn't just buy everything knowing the value did people just not realize this early on i don't think they i don't think uh, companies and people really realized that it was gone yeah because there are a lot of good names that i got early on and there are names that i know other people got so i don't think people really visualized where this was going to go when i saw it i jumped on and i said you know i thought this was really cool it was a it was a, you know like a, you know a land grab like in oklahoma in the early days they had they had everybody at the border and then they opened up when the internet came on uh, you know i was fortunate because i worked for the I got a job for a couple of years for the Vancouver Canucks and the Vancouver Grizzlies, which is the, was the first NBA team up in Canada, and the Canucks were a hockey team up in Canada. And they brought me up there to work on their um, computer systems, and then, I, then the Internet came along. I said, well, we had to set up a website. So we set up first websites on the Internet with the uh, an NBA website and the NHL website, mm-hmm. and I, I saw, the, saw how big thing was going to be. So when domain, domain names came along, which it, it opened up to the public in uh, 1996, um, I just started buying domain names. I thought this thing was going to be big. But it was fairly expensive at that time. It was $100 a domain. You had to buy it for, it was $50 a year, but you had to pay for it for one year, or for two years. So it became, you know, $100 for each name. So every time you bought one it you know it added up pretty quickly and this was a time where i mean you thought this is going to be big but it was far from a guarantee right it wasn't like you know i'm definitely going to be able to resell i think one of the ones you owned was broadband.com which uh right. you didn't know this for sure was going to be a huge thing or did you kind of have an inside track like this internet is no going to i didn't be... I, I did not have an inside track <laughs> i don't think anybody did it was all speculation yeah but i felt at the time this thing had the potential to be huge you know, we you know, and, and seeing what how big it was becoming just on the internet with the uh, professional sports teams. You know, we saw the fans getting involved in things like that. There are a lot of names that I that I picked up at the time, but a lot of names that I didn't pick up because it was expensive. And I thought, well, it's never going to be that big. But I regret picking up all the names I could because yeah. it, you know, cost me a lot of money as it turned out because some of the names became very valuable. Yeah, I think, you know, when it comes to these kind of speculative investments things, it's always like, ah, you know, I should have invested in that Facebook stock. Of course. (laughs) 2020 hindsight, you can always say that. Right on, right on. So, you know, you mentioned it's expensive, 100 bucks, a couple of years, and this is like 1995 dollars, right? So I don't know what inflation has done to that. Yeah, actually became open to the public. Yeah. But before that, you could go through the telephone companies and get domain, but it was a process to go through. So somebody had to work in that industry to be able to tie up and but then it became available to the public january of 1996 okay you know you mentioned it, how expensive it was to buy them buying a domain name you know one of the ones that isn't taken today is kind of you just go to godaddy.com or whatever and you drop 995 through a paypal account and you're good to go what was it like back then was it was it a complicated process or was it kind of just more expensive well, it was more expensive. You would sign up through uh, Network Solutions. Then you would have three days. It took three days 
for them to process the name to see whether or not they got it. Because okay. at that time, um, you, you you would, you know, key it in, and if the name was available, you say, okay, I want it. Then it would take three days, and then they say, okay, you got the name, or you didn't get the name. So in the early part of uh, 2000, excuse me, 1996, I was signing for names, the names that were available, I got right away, or I got within three days. And then about a month later, I started signing up, and it was available. But within that three-day period, they said, oh, somebody's ahead of you, so you didn't get the name. <laughs> That's when I knew the thing was really taken off, because names were going like hotcakes, and it was very hard to pick up a name, any name, any, you know, single word name or name describing, you know, a product or business or something like that, we're going right away. And then I started going a little bit into geographical names, but then they started going very fast too. Yeah. What was the situation like if you wanted to, you know, if there was a company, let's, you know, like Microsoft or whoever, who were just being a bit slow off the mark, or maybe not a tech company, but, you know, Walmart or whatever, and you buy walmart.com. Is that an issue or is it just you now own it and they have to buy it off you? It was an issue back then. It was a bigger issue than because if you, if you had a, if you registered a domain that was a trademark, yeah, they can go after you. Ah, okay. That's, and, yeah. And what they do is they would, they would follow the paperwork with, Network Solutions, and say they've you know, um, filed a name that's my trademark, and they would go through a process where they would just take the name off the system, and then you would fight it out in court. Right. And then they would put it back on. So it was a very complicated and messed up process at the time. Because this kind of ties into something you uh, were involved in, right, which was a very famous trademark today, which is Windows 2000, but interesting enough, it wasn't Win uh, Microsoft trademark. It was originally yours because you bought Windows2000.com, right? That was that was one of the first ones, if, if I'm not mistaken. One of the first names I got, yeah. yeah. And what happened was is that I wanted to come up with a website that, you know, had live cams on the internet. I always felt like live cams were really cool and they were going to take off and it was going to be the new thing. Yeah. Um, so I thought, you know, and I thought Windows would be a great one to say, okay, let the you know, your computer serve as a window looking at different places around the world on the internet. Windows was already taken by Microsoft. Uh-huh. Then I think at that time they had nine, uh, Windows 95, so I said, I'm going to look ahead and get Windows 2000, but not tie it in anything related to software, just make it into live cameras. So I did that. I got that, I think I got around um, 1996 or maybe 97. And then all of a sudden they decided that their new product um, after Windows 98 was going to be Windows 2000, and uh -huh. then <laughs> shit hit the fan. So everybody thought everybody thought I was going to sue Microsoft when I had the name. And I what I what I had was a um, common law trademark. So if you put on the if you like when I put on the website, I put Windows 2000. I put a T next to it. That means that I that it's a common law trademark. So it's not registered, but uh, effectively it does the same purpose. Mm -hmm. So I had a trademark, but that doesn't mean that no one else can use it. They just can't use it for that same purpose. Ah, okay. So you were you were essentially using it for your website, and Microsoft were using it for a piece of software. But because of that, it's cool. But I imagine Microsoft they would want Windows two thousand dot com because I remember I remember back in the day, like one one of my earliest like internet memories is someone asking me like, how do I find a website about something? And it was like there was an early game called Grand Theft Auto, like back when it was you know two right. D. And a friend from school, he was like, how do I find Grand Theft Auto cheat codes? Do I go to GrandTheftAutoCheatCodes.com? So I imagine back then a lot of people would be typing in, you know, I want to find out about Windows 2000. They'd just go to Windows2000.com, right? Right. Before Google you know, <laughs> yeah. sort of took over the internet, you used to be able to get websites by what the domain was. Yeah. So if you had Windows 2000 or something, and somebody wanted to find out, well, we got a lot of hits on it, obviously. Once Microsoft, you know, announced their product, but they announced their product name uh, about a year after we already owned the domain name. What was it? What was it like when you found out that you know Windows with Windows 95, Windows 98? Did you expect Windows 2000, or was it kind of like, oh, they really did it when they actually uh, when they actually announced that? Who knows, because I wasn't in the uh, inner circles of their company, but when it happened, when they announced it, you know, uh, I was getting calls from everybody. Somehow, uh, one person did an article about it, and then the press wanted to do an article, and CNN wanted me on, and all these different, you know, newspapers wanted me on. I, would, I remember I was in some Russian newspapers, I was in Indian newspapers, 
I was in Jerusalem <laughs> newspapers about it, and everybody thought I was going to sue Microsoft because that was a thing to do. And I just took the high road. I said, I have no intention at all of suing Microsoft. I said, if they... Uh, they, uh, they're they not overlapping with my product, not overlapping with their product. If you have the same name, so be it. In the back of my mind, I knew that it, it, the name had a uh, limited uh, life to it because after 2000, the name wasn't going to be worth anything. Right. So I was hoping they would uh, offer to buy it. They really weren't pursuing that. With me. They just said, okay, we, we sort of came to a standstill agreement. I talked to their people, and I said, you know, I'm not going to go after you. And they said, well, we're not going after you. I said, fine. But I was hoping to do something, and then they didn't do anything. So I went about a year, and nothing's happening. So then I, you know, I called up the contact I had at Microsoft. You know, by the way, I'm going to put this up uh, for sale um, on an option site. I just wanted to give you the heads up. So then I started getting legal letters and things like this, and you can't do that, and blah blah blah. So then we ended up, you know, nearing into a negotiation. Okay, and, and eventually that led to, like, wh- what is Windows2000.com, it, where did it end up going to? It actually, they, they, they got oh, it they in bought, they Okay, bought they it bought it from you. They, end, bought, they ended up, it, it was a, a per price, and uh, they gave me some software, because I wanted software. I don't know why. Um, and then they, um, oh, but they wouldn't budge on the price. I mean, it was, it was uh, you know, it wasn't as much as you would have thought it would be. It, it wasn't bad, though, but it wasn't, you know, life-changing. They basically said that um, uh, this is all we're going to go. And then I realized they had Bob.com. So I called up contact there who I was negotiating with. And I said, I'll tell you what, if you guys can throw in Bob.com into the mix, we got, you know, and into, you know, what they pay me and what the software was, you throw in Bob.com, we got a deal. He says, let me get back to you tomorrow. Talk to them to the power of be overnight. And they said, fine, you got it. So I, I love ended it. Up getting Bob.com. That's I got it. I recently read this this article about kind of negotiation, or maybe it was a podcast. They were talking about negotiating with airlines of all things, and they were like, "Get the deal on the table first, and then ask for extra things later." So you're like, "Yeah, I'll definitely sell you Microsoft uh, Windows 2000 dot com," <laughs> and then you're like, "And they're like, great, perfect, and I want Bob dot com." <laughs> right. Well, but the thing was, they they had the product Bob, which was a total bomb. Microsoft um, Bob. I read about this. Yeah, Mike, uh, Bill Gates' wife came up with that product. It wasn't a bad idea. It was like a dog or something. That was a tutorial on if you got stuck on something, you press a button and it would tell you what to do. Yeah. But it didn't take off. So um, <laughs> it did they had domain sense, though. And I think they, they weren't doing anything with it. They didn't know what to do with it. So when I threw that in, they figured, well, it's not costing them anything. They'll just give it to me. What the heck? Nice. So nice. it worked out for both of us. How did you find out they had it? It was just they had a list of domain names they owned or...? No, I was reading about their products. You know, once I started engaging them, you know, this whole thing, I started reading more about Microsoft, things like that. And then then I saw they had the product Bob, and then I remember looking it up to see who owned the Bob.com domain name, and I saw Microsoft had it, but they weren't doing anything with it. They shut down because the product was a bomb for them, and that that's how I figured it. And then I said, okay, well, if they're not doing anything with it, it's not going to cost them anything. And in fact, I they were going to let it go. Just let it expire. Down. Yeah, they would just let it expire because they didn't need it. But uh, but it was you know something I really wanted. So I, I remember saying to the guy I was negotiating with, I said, you know, you the domain name I want, the domain name you want. Let's put this all together to the deal. When when so. something when something like that expires today, what what happens? Do people just not let premium domains expire anymore, or do they kind of just return to the? Wow, I didn't even know who really sells them. I'm sure, like you know, GoDaddy or Internet BS or all these guys, they're just resellers, right? So they right now the way it works now is when it expires, you have a period of I think 60 days or something where you can get it back if you let it, exp- it expire, and a period of maybe a month or two after that, I don't know the exact timeline, where you can buy it back for a small premium, you know, hundred dollars or something. Then after that, it's open to the public. But then you got these trolls out there waiting for domain names to, you know, erroneously yeah. expire without the administration people you know, uh, paying the fees on it. They get expired, and then they, they grab a domain name, and then they hold the company hostage for it. I, I just, just out of curiosity, I know some of the early domains you you bought, and like streetmap.com, broadband.com, mm-hmm. dividend.com, englishman.com. Uh Yes. It, was, it was interesting, like to go back and uh, and now see what some of these are. Street Mac, which actually it was Windows two thousand dot com, which I think must have expired because it expired. They let it go. Yeah, yeah. Which amazing, like how how you know 
something that holds so much value for a company and then you're just being absolutely spot on like yeah well after the year 2000 you know in 2001 it it feels like in 1998 2000 sounds like the distant future but in 2001 it couldn't sound like further in the past <laughs> exactly well and i knew it had limited shelf life yeah. because i just figured what well, now it's not gonna be worth it it has the date on it um but i'm surprised they let it go i don't know why they let it go i wish i would have gotten it back yeah now, but now what the... happens is once a name expires you got all these bots and all these programs jumping on them you know applying for the name you know it's 1201 a.m when it's open on the market they have all these programs right. going after it and everything so yeah so uh so taking us back to to the story of bob.com you you got that domain and and what did you do with it i mean would it was it just kind of a personal site or you know i'd, I'd love to have simon.com that would be cool but what did you do with it well you know our business what happened in 95 when i was working for uh, well i mean my background's in finance accounting and i was the chief financial officer of a number of companies and uh, a number of publicly held companies mm-hmm. yeah when i went to uh, Orca Bay Sports and Entertainment, which was the NBA and NHL team, the Grizzlies and the Cucks, I, you know, got into the computer side of it, and it was sort of like a sabbatical for me for a couple of years, yeah. just to decompress from the other jobs I had. And then once I got into that, I said, God, if I can get a business going on the internet, that'd be kind of a cool thing to do. As a hobby, I was collecting stock and bond certificates. Yeah. And then I thought, you know, I can turn this into a business. It would be a lot more fun than making presentations to boards of directors and raising money and dealing with, you know, all the issues to deal with as a CFO. So I decided to set up a website, Net. And Scrapophily is the name of the hobby, you know, and it came from a... They had a contract in the Financial Times, it was 1978, of what to call the hobby, hobby, and somebody came up with scripophily, script meaning stock and collecting paper, or paper stock is script, and then awfully is a derivative of a Greek word meaning love, so they somebody put it together and came up with scripophily. The problem with scripophily is nobody can pronounce it, nobody remembers it, and nobody knows what it is, so when I, when I got Bob, I thought, well, if I can help that promote scripophily, Instead of explaining to people, you know, where's your website? Oh, it's Scribali. Well, how do you spell it? And you do all that. Yeah. I, I just tell them, you know, go to bob.com. And, they go, and then some people only say, you know, Bob? And I go, yeah, Bob. And they go, and I go, Bob with one O, you know, and then they think about it and they start laughing. Go, oh, Bob. You know, and then um, it, it's it works certainly, out well. It's certainly not one you forget. Like, I, I will admit, before we started recording this interview, I was like, uh, to confirm the pronunciation on script or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, Bob.com is definitely memorable. So from day one, it was like, I've got this domain. I'm going to start this thing. It, it was never the, the Bob Kirstein homepage. It was always, this is oh, a place. No, where... I wanted to turn the business. Yeah, that's you know, cool. It's valuable, too valuable piece of real estate just to turn into a personal. I mean, people call me Bob.com because, you know, that's my name is Bob. But at the end of the day, I've always tried to turn into a business. So just, just going a little off topic, I suppose, and branching into something I personally find very interesting. I find um, maps, old stocks and bonds, old money, money from different countries. It's basically, you know, there's so much art to that. Like just the, because they're all these finely printed things printed on these hugely expensive presses. And then so much of it is made and it's it's all, you know, especially when you go back a few years, it's all it's all right. so beautiful. The, the stuff you're selling on Bob.com now, I was looking through, uh, particularly through the, the more modern stuff from the dot-com bubble era, selling those like, pieces uh stock certificates from companies that i remember or many i remember that really don't exist anymore or really don't exist in that form anymore <laughs> sure oh the, you know most companies don't do stock certificates about 10 years ago the um exchanges don't didn't require companies to issue stock certificates any longer basically they have it so you just have to you know if somebody wants something, they'll give them a piece of paper you own stock in this company but it doesn't have to be a certificate at one time certificates were the you know the proof that you own stock in a company and they just got away from that you know people would lose their certificates they would have to reissue certificates and you know so many problems dealing with paper and every time you know, 20, 30 years ago, every time somebody bought a stock, they would have to issue a piece of paper, either give it to a person or put it in a vault somewhere. And they know everything's done electronically, so they don't do that any longer. So it's simplified the whole process and made it it's a lot more efficient. But meanwhile, the paper um, is very collectible. Yeah. People like collecting these. It's great art form, you say. 
um, more modern companies I've always liked because I grew up with them and I saw them and it was funny, uh, you know, when I sold certificates like Enron and WorldCom and things like that, <laughs> the the collectible paper was more worth much more than the actual stock and the value of the redeemable value of the stock and the company. Certainly with Enron. <laughs> yeah. I remember somebody did an article, you know, uh, this this stock is worth the paper it's printed on, you know, or something like that. Yeah, they, now collectible. Or then I, then I remember I had a somebody was doing an article and I said our 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 stock, or, you know, these companies are worth more dead than alive. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any Enron stock left over? Any paper? I think so. I think oh, we have some. Awesome. We have some in, but we buy them and sell them all the time. Oh, that's cool. I, I got to check that out. Do you ship to Europe? Yes. Oh, cool. I'll definitely we ship check that ship out. ship over the world. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, oh, I also read, you're se- are you selling Bob.com? I wasn't sure about that. It, it kind of said on your website, but I know it was a, maybe last year or is that, is that yeah, true? Yeah, people, you know, people would contact us all the time about buying Bob.com. Yeah. So because I'm getting older in age and I'm thinking about, you know, our retirement and things, looking at entertaining offers for Bob.com, if we get the right offer, we'd split. Well, Bob of Bob.com, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. I really appreciate it. I think uh, I had a bunch of questions and you, uh, you answered them all beautifully. Thank you.